Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. Hi kitty. Hello kitty. Hello puppy. They don't have names. I should give them names. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm out here at the witch farm because I needed to put away the glass that I was using and dig in that tunnel in the nether. And, uh, I knew I had some glass out here. So I came out to grab it because it just seemed easier. Oh, look at all that stuff flowing up into the witch farm. Let's go make sure the, uh, it's all picking up. So, welcome. Um... I haven't done much. Oh. Since last time. Yeah, everything's working. I think. Should be coming around to the various item filters. My patent pending circular item filter no that's a bad sign that suggests that everything is not working let's see if we can get up there and see what's going on um well ah I don't know okay let's take a look I've got these sort of buffer filters, buffer spots, I don't know what to call them. Uh, I have nether rack. I can use the nether rack as a pillar material. Sure. Let's do that. Uh, sorry for the air conditioning. I am, oh, let's use the snow bricks. Uh, <clears throat> it's been, uh, it's, it's June in Los Angeles, and the weather people like using the pun June gloom because June tends to sticks I wonder if this hopper was just uh, Seth just get uh, of course I can't see it that's my overflow ha huh. I think everything was working so the filter is here. And that's all still set up right. The filter's here. Uh, I think we just got a couple items glitched out. Which means we're losing items on the witch farm. Which is not great. Anyway. Um, June gloom. The weather people like using that term. Here's my overflow chest. Oh, there's some brown stained glass in there. Interesting. I will leave it for the time being. Oh, look, glowstone. Actually, I could use the glowstone. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, weather people like June gloom because June in Los Angeles, things tend to get kind of overcast and not super awesome. Um, it's nighttime, so I'm going to sleep. But, and that's, uh, our June so far has been kind of a mix of Oh, I spawned on the bed because there weren't any solid blocks around to spawn on. So I spawned on the bed and I bounced. Interesting. I think that's what happened. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, June so far has been interesting. Um, a little bit gray and overcast and some cool days. Nothing, uh, nothing. We haven't really gotten anything. We've had some days where it warmed up a little bit. But it hasn't gotten hot. Uh, today was the first hot day. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, just suddenly got hot. And that was interesting. I must have grabbed these. Ah, stop it. I hate the way the game does that. So, uh, so yeah. Um, Chihuahua Power G is in. Oh, look at all this glowstone. Yes, I'm going to bring... 
screw these few pieces of glowstone dust in my pocket. I'm going to bring... Uh, yeah. I'm going to bring this whole chest of glowstone. Blocks. Uh, draw power G's in Portland, visiting friends, going to see a show. And uh, I was left alone. Taking care of the pooches and um, just doing some stuff. Hey, buddy. You okay? Meow. Bark. Okay, the dog's AI is working. And we stand here long enough, we should start to see stuff flowing because it, but it takes a while for the witches to die. So let's not do that. Let's go visit bunny rabbits. I haven't seen them in a while. So, yeah, yesterday I went to go see a show at the Geffen Playhouse. There's a magician named Helder. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name. He's from Portugal. And he was, uh, it was a fantastic show. I really, really liked it. And it was, it was pretty great. Um, <clears throat> I had not had a chance to see him perform before. So it was kind of my first time. Uh, seeing him live, uh, I was he was fantastic, and I can't wait to see him again at some point in the future. Um, and uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of published material. <clears throat> but uh, so so there wasn't a lot of ways of getting to know him. Uh, he has a few videos on YouTube and one of which is an interview that he did with somebody for a Google uh, Google interview series and that was really quite good and that was kind of what made me go oh I knew that he had the show going and that was the, the thing that made me go well let me go see if there are any tickets left and there were a few tickets here and there some of the shows have like one or two seats left it's the series is gonna sell out uh, the show is called Invisible Tango, and it's a it's a nice little a nice little piece. There's a storyline that ties the whole thing together, and it's filled with little magic tricks. Uh, and yeah, that was uh, it was pretty cool. Ah, um, so I laid out the tunnel here and lit the portal, and this was still largely unfinished and. Uh, and I let Barb makes things know about it, and then I I logged in somewhere over here, and I was like I was down in the floor. It was like my eye level was like a half a block down because Barb had come along and she had finished. She had put all the half slabs on the floor, and she kind of cleaned up some of the stuff, some of the stuff that I had intended to come back and do. Um, and uh, so thank you Barb for finishing things let's go check out and see if there's been much progress out of the beach house Interior looks largely the same. Oh, except this uh, conversation pit or whatever it is now has bookshelves instead of regular blocks. Ah, ah. Oh, there's lighting floating in the. Is that a light? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Experimenting with interior decoration. Oh, that's cool with the iron, the iron bars, and the the map. Oh, 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 clearly things have changed. We are... This is the building we're in. And there's a big... Flat area. Indicated on the map that I don't remember seeing. Oh, well, maybe it's just this part of the house. I don't know. All right. So no new crazy structures or anything. Um, and this whole area must get lousy with mobs at night. 
Is that a puffer fish? That is not a puffer fish. Okay. I heard a dolphin, right? Is there a dolphin underneath here? Yeah, there's dolphins. Oh, wow. This is kind of cool. Neat little aquarium set up. Oh, that's right. Grace of the Dolphin. Hey, look, a drown. Should switch to the trident. I don't need your zombie flesh. Thank you much. All right. So this area looks somewhat the same. I, judging by the map, I'm guessing that she's done some exploring in the area around here. Um, which is cool. But this is pretty neat. I'm going to go back to the artificial village area and start moving her villages around. Um, I didn't really have much planned other than that. couple things to talk about um, other than the magic show the let's see I think last video I talked a little bit about the Jerry's Nugget uh, playing cards that was had a Kickstarter going um, <clears throat> yeah and I think I don't maybe I no. Uh, you know what? I probably should have gone back and rewatched my video before starting this. Uh, so if I were talked about this, I apologize. But there was an announcement uh, on June 1st. And now today is the 9th. So this was last, this was just over a week ago. Uh, I don't know if I, I can't remember when I was recorded. Yeah, I don't remember if I already talked about this. Um, there was an announcement between the United States Playing Card Company and Cardamundi, which is Cardamundi is kind of like a... They're based in Belgium, or they make their cards in Belgium. They're a very old company that makes playing cards and board games and cards for board games. And uh, they announced that they were... <clears throat> they were buying the United States Playing Card Company. Which is a tad troubling. Um, from the standpoint of not liking things to change. <laughs> which is dumb. Um, ultimately, this is probably going to end up being a very good thing. But it just somebody who doesn't like change it's kind of you know it, it's kind of worrying uh so we'll find out what happens exactly but u.s playing card company was they're one of the bigger card manufacturers in the world playing card manufacturers in the world they make bicycle cards and tally hose and bees and hoil and and you know and a lot of those they got through acquisition they bought other companies oh i got more more scutes. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it's not like they've existed in their current form for 130 years or whatever the case is. Um, it is, you know, they're a conglomerate and they've grown, but they are currently owned by a company that owns other companies. And they own brands <laughs> basically you know they own uh oh i don't remember offhand the other some of the other brands that they own but basically they own brands that's what they do and they haven't really cared about u.s playing card company and their product and the people who use them other than from the standpoint of just wanting them to keep buying them uh for quite some time so it's not like it's not like this is a horrible thing that means the the end of the world as we know it. Um, hi. Oh, I'm glad I didn't get rid of this guy because might be able to get him unlocked. 
this will be an interesting test. He is one of those rare cases of villagers completely locked up all their trades. Uh, but in the new system, if I give him a workstation, he might be able to re restock. So that's kind of cool. We'll see what happens. Oh, I heard eggs hatching already. Okay. So, U.S. Playing Card Company was basically a commodity brand that was owned by a company that owns a bunch of brands. So, <clears throat> and they were more concerned about protecting the uh, the intellectual property of their brands and their trademarks and copyrights and all that stuff uh, than they were anything else. Anyway, so... What was that? Do we have a baby hatch? Oh, that was a really weird sound, wasn't it? I'm going to cheat. Do I see? Oh, there's a little baby. So one of the one of the eggs already hatched. That was a pretty violent sound for an egg hatch. Okay. Done cheating. Cool. So we'll get more scutes when he grows up. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, Card Monday actually in uh, sort of engages its uh, its users, its its uh, its customers, particularly the people who do things like you know. Um, use their cards for for magic um, where US playing card company has been a little bit antagonistic towards people wanting to do unusual things with their cards uh, for the sake of magic oh we appreciate it may not be any value in keeping you but there may we'll find out um, <clears throat> so U.S. Playing Card Company, uh, several years ago when they got sold to Newell Brands, which is the company that, again, is selling them to, uh, Card of Monday, uh, they had this sort of edict where it was, nope, you cannot, you cannot do anything to modify the design of the back of the cards. That, ow. Um, <clears throat> that back design... The, the writer back that's like our super valuable intellectual property and you can't change it so you can't uh, um, <clears throat> so you can't make funny card designs that that look like but aren't exactly like our, uh, our writer backs and that uh, that put some people um, not out of business, but it 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 definitely didn't help um, some people because they were had cards that they had designed that were specifically built around playing card. They were they were specifically designed. They had cards that were designed to look like regular bicycle cards. And <clears throat> so having uh, not being able to produce those cards anymore, there, there were actually magic tricks and magicians who just stopped being able to do their stuff. <clears throat> um, we need... I need power rails. Let me go get those. So, Carter Monday has no problem making special gimmick diversions of their main card lines, uh, specifically for magicians. So, so anyway, this could be a good thing. One of the problems is that, depending on what you grew up being familiar with. Uh, 
There are people who really like United States playing card company cards and really hate. Is that going to work? I don't think it is. Uh, and really hate Carter Monday cards. Carter Monday cards have a tendency to be a little bit um, thicker and heavier feeling. That should work. So, uh, I don't know. We will We will see. Um, it'll be interesting. I'll actually put a powered rail in there and everything will be good. And it also seems like, at least from their initial statements, Cardamende is saying that they don't intend to make... Whoa. Oh. Well, it would help if I powered the powered rails. Or I could just do this. Interesting. An unpowered powered rail acts like a brake, so at least it doesn't slip back downhill. Okay. I don't know, that's kind of cool. So, we will see. Now, the... I have a feeling, and I think I mentioned this, that the, the Jerry's Nugget, um, some of those cards went on sale a small, a small sort of lot of them went on sale just a few weeks, a couple weeks before the Kickstarter announcement, before the announcement for the new decks. And, I, and they went on sale at a place that was uh, owned Spruce Trap Door. Um, <clears throat> on a, the, the person who this is a little complicated. So, the the person who owns Expert Playing Card Company, which is the company that's making, that's producing the cards, I think that's the right term, <clears throat> they, you know what, I'm going to move that ladder over one. Yes, I am. Uh, so, the Expert Playing Card Company, and they're the people who have their factories in Taiwan. Um, the person who owns that also runs a website called the Conjuring Arts, and it's a really good website that is focused on sort of magic history, and they've got some good products, and they have uh, ebooks of out-of-print um, classic books. <clears throat> so... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go out all the way over here. Even though this was completely arbitrary how far I dug in. So, <clears throat> anyway. Um, so the, the new... The stock of Jerry's Nuggets that went on sale... Uh, went on sale at Conjuring Archive um, and they've had them in in the past and they seem to have a line on being able to get authentic decks probably from the collector who bought all of the the remaining stock of decks in 1999 um, I think Bill Kalush the guy who owns Conjuring Arts and the expert playing card company I think he knows the uh, the collector who who bought the remaining decks. Um, <clears throat> so there we go. Let's put a torch up, a regular torch up over here, just until I get this all figured out. And then I want to put in more of this. Um, 
I don't need to go up that high, but I'm going to. Because I'm probably going to end up... taking out all this. But... And then this is right here. <clears throat> That's where I want to put in the ladders. There we go. Yeah, I think that'll work. So, anyway, um... Do I have enough ladders? Did I lose some ladders? So, my suspicion is that the... Put them in there. There we go. <clears throat> this batch of Jerry Nugget, Jerry's Nugget uh, cards that went, the original 1970 cards that went on sale at, at Conjuring Arts was probably related to the, uh, it was probably timed to match the, uh, the announcement of the Kickstarter for the new cards. It's my guess. I don't know. Um, be interesting to find out but it totally makes sense Oops. cool so anyway um so and that's the second sort of foreign acquisition of a gaming company in the last few months um i think i had mentioned that when i was in boston there was some buzz about these cards that were being sold at Michael's stores, the art supply stores, that were like two dollars a deck, which is pretty cheap for playing cards. And the the buzz was, hey, they're actually pretty good. Uh, and I went and bought, I went and bought some, and yeah, they're actually pretty good. Um, they're not great. They're they're kind of heavier. They're kind of heavier cards <clears throat> um, than what I'm used to with the bicycle and other United States playing card cards but it's a company that makes uh, cards for casinos uh, a lot of casinos in the US and and they uh, they use the name uh, the stuff they produce they use the name Paulson and Gemico so they're kind of uh, they're kind of big, big names in terms of uh, casino. Um, oh, how do I get down there? Oh, how do I get down there? Um, ah. So they got bought, and they were an American. Uh, they're an American company in the Midwest, and they got bought by a Japanese company called Angel. Oh, I'm sorry, I got the hiccups. They were bought by a Japanese company called Angel that primarily does casino uh, products for the Asian market. Casinos are quite big in... Oh, she's back. Uh, <clears throat> in Japan and, and uh, China and whatnot. So, um, <clears throat> South Korea, I think. I think Korea and South Korea, uh, China and South Korea have legal gambling in some places. Anyway, so that was, uh, so there's been some acquisitions there, and depending on your view of things, it's um, either good news or bad news. It's hard to tell. Okay, so this guy was depreciated, so he's a knockback two for ten. I do have a sign now as a result of breaking that one. I'm going to have to go empty some pockets. And... Librarian, depreciated. Ah, and now I will have enough. I will have double walls around these guys so I can put a sign here. Oops, do I want to do that? No. It was knocked back. Ten, right? Uh, 
Okay. I'll go double check that. Knock back two for ten. So I think the thing that most people are worried about on the USPCC thing is that the the quality of the cards does not uh, does not suffer, and Carter Monday has sort of stated that they don't expect to make a lot of changes immediately. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe everything will be just fine, and there's no cause to panic. We will find out. <clears throat> um, but it does make the the timing of the Jerry's Nugget announcement interesting. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and light this up. Can I do that from here? No, of course not. I need to get some levers. Let me get that. Uh, the other big news of the week uh, was actually something I kind of mentioned and talked a little bit on my Maker Fair wrap up video, I think. Uh, Make Media, which is the company that publishes Make Magazine and, um, and runs the Maker Fairs. Uh, announced, unfortunately, that they were sh ceasing all operations and laying off all of their employees. Um, so the the stories that were circulating about uh, the maybe this is the last make your fair unfortunately were true. Um, <clears throat> and my suspicion about the the story and the stories in the newspapers up in the Bay Area right beforehand being uh, sort of last <clears throat> last last ditch sort of plea for government money. I suspect, I doubly suspect now is absolutely true. Um, that they were trying to figure out a way of doing it without shutting things down and laying people off. <sighs> Ow! At least I got that lever. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's really sad because fourteen more than sixty. Because uh, an awful lot of people really enjoyed going to Maker Fair each year, and um, not having it is kind of sad um, now they left open sort of the notion that you know some it, it could sort of continue in some form 14 and 16 was it ocean 14 Woodland 16. Excellent. I got it right. Uh, anyway, so that's really sad. I imagine they will probably be courting or entertaining offers of people to buy some of the intellectual property rights that make media holds. So it's possible somebody could continue, could buy and continue publishing Make Magazine, which would be nice because it's a. Uh, It'd be a shame to see that go away too. Um, <clears throat> but you never know. Oops. Got myself in that situation again. Ow. Anyway, um, so there that's kind of the news of the week. Ah, okay. So I'm thinking I might make this instead of having. I don't know. It might be nice having two rows of 
a walkway here. Feel a little less claustrophobic than it does over there. I don't know, we'll see. And that would mean putting up a row of fences or something along here. Um, could also just put it all the way across. The problem is then getting people up, getting villagers up into this space could be a little bit challenging. This is my back wall. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, well, I have to continue building out these stalls and moving the villagers. So at this point, he then has enough. Or does he? <sighs> yeah, I think that's right. So if I put the workstation down here, Then that works. Okay, I have to go double check in my creative world to see how that all worked. And make sure I've got enough space here. I think I do. I think this is good. I think this is right. Oops. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do some inventory management. I think that was all I had to talk. Whoa. What was that? Okay. Um, I think that's all I had to talk about. I'm going to keep working on that. I'll work on that off camera. Spend a little time. I'm still doing a lot of spend a lot of time practicing and preparing for my next audition at the Magic Castle. That has not. Uh, I, I have a new. I have a scheduled audition date, but we're actively hoping that that audition date is not the actual one because it's like in September late or late August anyway it's it's a ways away and it's farther away than I would like it to be um, <clears throat> so so we're kind of hoping for a cancellation in July might be asking to oh I don't want to be carrying this around either um, so we will see um, there is an audition coming up next week I think um, an audition slot that I could have if I wanted, however, or at least there was at, at one point. But the server's gotten a little bit wonky. <clears throat> where Barb is. But I didn't want to... I didn't necessarily feel like the that soon uh, audition slot was a good idea because I wanted to have time to go sort of consult with the people who have been helping me because I think their advice is good and I don't want to I don't want to screw this up I want to get it right so that is the the basic plan um, So, anyway. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I had a cold. Um, that was... That I'm still kind of getting over. I've still got a sore throat and a cough, so... Apologize for coughing in your ear. Um, but that was... I think that was it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that'll work. So I think that's it. Um, I will continue working on this and get these guys all spaced out. 1.14. They released a. They've been releasing snapshots for 1.14.3. 
which oh, it took sign. Okay. Um, <clears throat> which is again they just weren't ready they shouldn't have uh, released 1.14 they still had work to do and they knew it I think um, and I don't know if this is kind of a sign of the Microsoft Microsoft way sort of finding its way into the uh, the development cycle at Mojang but the <clears throat> um, even though they they open up I oh, will leave that there uh, even though they open up the snapshots were for users to test um, I just it's like they're waiting until the release to really get the proper testing and I don't know I don't I don't know what I don't know what to say about that I don't think it's I don't think it's right I think they knew that they had problems and they wanted to get it out on schedule even though there's no real good reason to to, to force these things I don't know could be wrong um, but that's uh, that's that. So 1.14.3 has more server improvements, and it seems like it's the first one that is really going to be ready for going onto the server anyway. And Spigot is slowly still releasing their development test builds, so um, we'll we'll get there. We will get upgraded at some point. Um, I'm not in a rush. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. Oh, and they one one significant change that they made, and then they kind of re-changed uh, was Iron Golem spawning because they they seriously broke like they badly broke Iron Farms, um, unfortunately. And so they. Uh, so they kind of they kind of backpedaled a little bit and they changed the way iron golems are spawned and of course I expect it will change again <clears throat> but um, oops. There we go. um <clears throat> so I expect it will change again but um, But I have it. It gives a little bit of hope on the, the iron farm actually be, being a viable thing for the server once they get they get done. So that's uh, that's good. Um, and they uh, when they initially backpedaled, they did it in a way that. Oops, um, made it seem like <clears throat> I don't know they realized how badly they kind of screwed it up um, and they wanted to sort of apologize to all of the uh, people who had iron farms that they seriously broke um, but they then nerfed that somewhat um, and in a way that didn't doesn't even really make sense to me. So they had a whole they had a whole system in place where oh no this is not where this goes anyway. So they had a whole they had this whole mechanism in place where the villagers would get together at certain times of day and they would gossip. They would like gather around the water cooler almost literally and they would they would gossip and they would gossip about you know how happy they were and then they would gossip about how bad things were um, and one of the things that they could gossip about is like oh man we really could use an iron golem around here and the the game sort of needed a certain number of those types of gossips There we 
go. Is this the right back call? Yeah. <clears throat> um. And and so it really slowed down the whole. The, the villagers had to be able to get together and do their gossiping, and it really slowed down iron golem production. Um, <clears throat> and so, and I think they were probably trying to figure out ways of sort of tweaking that mechanic and decided that, no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't fixable. So they just, they just gave up on it and they, um, <clears throat> Um, so now what they did was they basically inst gossip would increase when villagers were scared they had this sort of uh, tag that was like oh I'm scared I see a zombie <laughs> or there's zombies nearby um, and that was one of the things that could trigger uh, Instead of the gossip, they would basically just say, "Oh my gosh, there's zombies," and that would that would. Uh... So when they made the change, they made it so that um, just having one villager be scared about zombies was enough. Uh, to have a chance, a good chance of spawning on our goal. So they just got rid of the whole gossip uh, thing. The gossip the gossip was basically MBT tags in the villagers that basically said <clears throat> oh my gosh, I you know, if they, if they gossip about uh, how scared they are, then it just increases their count of <clears throat> scared top is scare gossip and um, so <clears throat> they ditched that whole mechanic and they just put in if a villager was scared there was a chance of spawning a zombie and it was a fairly high chance and if you had three villagers uh, I think the Psycraft guys figured out that if you had three villagers um, who, who were within a certain distance of a zombie, they could uh, they could by themselves spawn a an Argol. And so they built up a farm in which. Uh, that's all you did, and then you, you sort of built little, uh, little cell holding uh, three villagers and a zombie that was, oops, uh, that was name tagged or whatever, so he couldn't despawn. And, uh, <clears throat> Frostwalker 2 for 20. Um, and then the the villagers would sit there and then every, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, they had a chance of spawning a zombie within a certain period of time. Uh, so then they went and nerfed that in the latest pre-release. Um, where the villagers still had to go to work. And, and sleep. Which level of Frostwalker was this? Is it two? I think this is the guy that I don't... Yeah, it's Frostwalker too. I don't have a good Frostwalker enchant. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> so, anyway... Uh, so they, they changed it so the, the villagers have to be able to sleep. They can't just be in a state of terror all the time. They have to sleep and they have to do their work. And in my opinion, if 
if there are zombies about and the villagers are if this you know if, if minecraft were real life and there were zombies about and the villagers were actually scared they wouldn't be able to sleep or do their work um, I think they should be able to be in a state of, of fear all the time um, but that's just me so I don't know <clears throat> but the uh, sidecraft guys came up with a way of of modifying the farm so that the villagers have access to a bed and they can actually use it and they put a little daylight timer on there so the zombie gets lowered in and out of their field of view um, so that they can actually do their do their thing uh, during work times it's a little bit of a kludge and it doesn't and I guess it ends up not affecting the rates that badly so it's not horrible but it's just kind of annoying um, <clears throat> I don't it's it's an end game thing I don't really see a reason why uh, people shouldn't be able to build things like iron farms but <clears throat> Mo Yang has a different point of view on the topic so I know I probably said like 10 minutes ago that I was that I have done talking I am now um, I will sign off and I'm keep working on this but <clears throat> so you won't have to sit here watching me make minuscule progress every single time I sit down and record a video. All right, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. This is Theron. It's Minecraft Land Party, and uh, I will see you next time. Right, bye.